Hey, this is John Boy in the Country, and I'm going to be doing some crafts today. This is my first video, so just bear with me. Um, this was a little, like, teapot thing that I found at Hobby Lobby. It was 40% off. So, um, it's actually made to hold real flowers. But what I've done already is I glued a uh, greenery thing inside the plastic that goes inside of it. And this is what's in there. This is the green thing. And people are going to question why I left the plastic on there. But that's because I'm going to put moss and stuff so you won't see it. And actually when you put the hot glue on... It'll actually melt some of the plastic and hold the um, moss into place. So, with that being said, we're going to get started. And if you don't have one of these, please go out and get one. It is a Ryobi hot glue gun. And it is one of the best things that I have for my crafting. It comes off of the base. There's no cord. Once it gets hot, it's hot for a while. And in between gluing and stuff, you just set it back in the cradle and go on. There's a little drip guard on it to catch all the excess hot glue. So that really helps out with the mess. Um... And as we get into more videos and stuff, I'll explain more stuff. Um, this is just my first rodeo. And in a minute, I'm going to have to put my hair up because it's long and it's wet. And it's getting in my face. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to have a hot glue gun ready. Or a hot glue stick ready for when I need it. This is my hair tie. <laughs> And we're gonna go ahead and get started. So let me grab my moss. This is another thing that I got at Hobby Lobby the other day. And just so you know, this doesn't have to cost a fortune. This was 40% off, this was 40% off. So for the two things, it was less than $10. Um, I have plenty of flowers over there in a minute I'm gonna get them and uh, show you which ones I'm gonna use uh, this is just something fun that I like to do and I thought um, you know maybe we could do it together anyways uh, if you have any questions or comments just let it be um, just go ahead and comment and let me know what you think I'll do my best to get back to everybody um, so here we go. And you might be able to hear the music in the background. I love to have a little music going while I'm working. This is actually the soundtrack for um, Rocky Horror Pictures Show. Let's do the time warp again with Laverne Cox. So it's just a little something that I like to listen to. It makes me feel good. So, you know. Okay, so we're going to take... So what I did was I glued that in. I'll put a, top, a dab of hot glue right here. Um, so that we can hold, the, hold it into the basket. You're just gonna hold it in space, in uh, place for a minute. Space. <laughs> you know what I mean, in place for a minute. <laughs> okay, we got that in. And this uh, hot glue gun uses low temperature or high temperature glue sticks. So either way, you'll be okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and just 
put glue strips across the top. And every once in a while, you might catch me singing. It may not be the greatest. It may sound like dogs howling, honey. But it makes me happy, so why not? And you're going to make a mess. Like, there's no getting around that. this in space in place for a minute I don't know why I keep trying to say space but we're gonna hold it in place and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it upside down we're gonna shake the loose moss out of place and then um, depending on what it looks like we may add some more glue and put some more if it's okay though we will just um, you know clean up what we can for now and then I'll get the flowers and we'll go from there. And as you can see, a lot of it actually glued down. So this is what it looks like now. Just looks like a, a, some dead, almost some dead grass, but it's not, it's moss. And you always need a good craft table to work on. I didn't have one, so I actually built this one. Um, no, it's not the best, and like you can see where I had to use wood filler on some of the bad spots on the wood, because I just use two by fours and um, an eighth of an inch thick nice piece of wood for the top and then I just stained it that's all I did but it's always good to have a good workspace and try to keep it as clean as you can like you can see over here in my corner where there are bags and photos and stuff that I've been cleaning this room cleaning this room trying to get ready to make videos but in all honesty what ended up happening was I ended up having way too much stuff for my um, craft boxes and all the stuff that I have to separate them. So, the, um, okay, we got most of that up. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work on the, we're gonna do the outside of it first, okay? I like to start on the outside. Some people start in the center and work their way out. I like to start on the outside and work my way in. That way you make sure to get it nice and full. I'm gonna use some of these, which if you, you can get this from like, um, I actually ordered these off of Amazon. They were like uh, $6 for a hundred of them. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bend them like so. And then I'm gonna put them in. And you wanna make sure that when you put them in, they're not like excessively hanging over where it looks way too big for the pot or the basket or whatever you're using. So, I'm actually going to put them on the opposite side going that way this, for this one. And then the next one, we're gonna do the same way, just on the opposite side. And it should take about four of these, um, maybe more, maybe less, depending on how full you want it. Um, and then 
For me, I like to just put a little dab of hot glue under the sticks as I go just to hold them in place to the moss so that everything's secure. If it falls off, you might get some loose moss or if it falls off the shelf, you might get some loose moss or, um, you know, just little stuff, but the main portion of it will not come out. And this is really easy. Um, for me, it's relaxing. I love to make things and because it makes me feel like I've accomplished something in the day, which uh, I haven't worked in about in a while. And this is just something to make me feel like I contribute in some way. My husband works, so I really wish to, I would have just said something else, but it's okay. Um, okay, so those are nice and attached to the moss now. And you can see they still have some move in them. You know, most plants do. And if you think I'm trying to do this to look real, it, uh, to me that doesn't matter as long as it's pretty. So whatever, it's really your preference. So I'm gonna get two more of the, these are actually uh, pine, baby pine branches. So I'm gonna probably end up using one, two, probably five just so that I get coverage on the bottom. And yes, it looks lopsided at the moment. It won't forever. It'll actually look slightly better <laughs> I hope <laughs> and that actually looks pretty good for what I'm wanting to do. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put one more just so you can r really see. I don't wanna cover the spigot up on the front on this little planner. That's one of the cutest parts of it. So you want, the more you put, you won't, like this one, we're not going to attach to the um, moss because there's other branches on top of it that we can attach to with the hot glue. So, do you have to use hot glue? No, you don't. Um, you can use nothing. You can use Gorilla Glue, Super Glue, really whatever you have handy. I like to use hot glue. I've been using it for years on all kinds of stuff. And it just really, for me, as long as you're not putting it in direct sunlight for extended amounts of time, it really holds together. Now, the reason I say not in sunlight is because the sunlight will actually heat the glue back up, whether it's a hot melt or a low melt glue stick. And with uh, that, it'll make it loose and things will start coming out. So just keep that in mind if you're making one of these for like in the sun somewhere you don't want to do it where you can where it's going to sit in direct sunlight and you're and if you do don't use hot glue because the glue does come back up or i don't know what you would want to call it reactivate or loosen whatever it is the um sometimes on my front door i use hot glue to make christmas wreaths and I'll glue, um, you know, the Christmas balls and stuff on the wreath 
And after a couple of years of the sun hitting it, the uh, balls or the decorations or whatever it is will come loose. So uh, I'll have to go back in and hot glue that again. And most of the time when I have to do that, I will just make a uh, different... Um, I won't make it, I'll make the wreath different. Like I'll add different stuff and make it look slightly different just so that it looks fresh every time I redo it. Um, right now I am going to pause the video uh, so I can get the flowers out and I will be right back. Um, and if you want, get a drink, use the restroom. That's what I'm going to do. Even though it's going to seem like a second on this, you'll, <laughs> you'll get it. Just pause the video if you need to go to the restroom. Okay, so we're back. Okay, so I just... Um, I had these in a bag over there, but it's just so <laughs> y'all know. I went to Dollar Tree and got these. Um, they're nothing special. I mean... They don't look like, I mean, they look okay, you know, and for what we're going to do, they're going to look just fine. Um, I got blue and red and I got some baby's breath. And if that doesn't look full enough when we're done, then we'll do, we'll add some more. While I had the video pause, I also got my pliers. They're actually wire cutters um, so that I can cut these because they have metal wire in them. If you don't have pliers, um, you can cut them with scissors. It just, it's, it's kind of hard. Um, if you don't have scissors or wire cutters, I, why don't y'all tell me what you would use if you didn't have scissors or wire cutters? Because the best thing I got is my teeth. <laughs> Even though that don't really work, trust me. Um, so, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut these off like so. Ooh. And if this isn't enough baby's breath, I have some more over there, which I can get. Um, and, you know, for... For Lord's sake, or for goodness sake, cut, make sure not to put the price tag in the arrangement. I made that mistake one time, and not because I didn't think about it. I was in a hurry, and I was trying to put something together, and I put it all together, and then I had to go back out and in and cut out like four or five of these and we, you just don't want to do it. Just make sure to do it beforehand. That way you don't have to worry about it. Okay, so this right here, this you can save. You can use it if you need to. For me, I'm just going to chunk it because the, the leaves look kind of wrinkly and stuff. And I just, I just don't need it. Oh, so. Now you can push this up. Look, see on the stem, you see how it is? You can make it go up or down, how, however you really want it. For me, I just want it to be about here. And I'm going to kind of try to go around the perimeter of the planter with it making sure to cover up where uh this is up here on the front and i mean you don't got to worry about the middle because when we put the other flowers in it's going to cover that so here we go i'm gonna, of course i'm gonna use some hot glue on the bottom of it just put it around the stem and then i'm going to take the stem and if you have hairs and stuff from the hot glue gun, that's really not that big of a deal. Um, I wouldn't even worry about it until you were done making the arrangement. And then you can get your scissors 
or whatever and just cut the axis off. Don't pull it. If you pull it, it's just gonna string out like spider webs. So this one we're going to put right here in the front. And we're gonna stick it down in there. And see, you can see as we go, I'll probably, I don't know, I might be able to make this one work. But, um, now I did leave the greenery on some of them, only because it'll help fill in certain things. Um, even though I don't really care for the floppiness of that leaf. <laughs> Your name bless me so. Yeah, you might hear me singing from time to time, and I may not even like the song, but you know, singing makes me feel good. Whether I'm good or bad, it doesn't matter. It just matters what makes you happy and what makes you feel good, especially with all the mental health and stuff these days. Like, you know, maybe if our parents and our, uh, the generation older than us would have paid more attention to what mental health actually was. Maybe it wouldn't have been so hard on our generation, but it is what it is. And you just got to find what makes you happy. So, um, there is an extra little branch right here in the middle of this. I didn't push the, um, I didn't push the thing up on it at all. I actually pushed it down. So what I'm going to do is just cut it off just so that it's not showing. And this is kind of looking slightly loose on some of the little points. So I'm gonna put a little dab of hot glue here and there, just so that it, the baby's breath don't spin on the stem. And once we get to know each other a little bit better, the videos won't seem as long um, because you'll know me and I'll know you and y'all, y'all will get the, get to see what I like to do and what I'm capable of and I'll get to know you from your comments and stuff. So, and if there's ever anything that y'all want to see me do, just let me know. Like, even if I don't know how to do it, I can try. So that's one thing about me is I can try anything. I can do anything. And if it doesn't turn out good, it just doesn't turn out good. But if it don't turn out good, I probably won't show the video. And sometimes you gotta play with it. I mean, I'm sure the ones of you that do the do crafting and stuff, um, you're gonna know that you gotta mess with stuff sometimes just to make it fill out and, you know, and it's calming. I mean, really, it's very calming in my opinion. And I'm definitely gonna have to get another thing of baby's breath, but I'll get up and get that in just a second. I'm, I probably won't even pause the video. Is how to grow one more, more. To stay the distance, I've got an itch to scratch. Sisters, touch me, dirty. And I mean. If you want to do this as a, um, a live arrangement, you could do that. There are little metal things at Hobby Lobby that you get and you can use your pliers or your wire cut or some pliers, excuse me, and, uh, 
you just bend the metal around the actual stem of the real flower and you'll use the same thing this and you'll just stick them down depending on how deep the thing is you might want to use two of them you know it really depends um, this is just something little so I only used one um, and I'm actually gonna make this for my mom and give it to her um, she I say my mom but I actually we're gonna make a cross for her and so she might she might get this one there are plenty of wonderful people in my life that I can give it to um, not that they've always been wonderful life is a struggle for everybody whether you know it whether they see you whether everybody struggles with something and so even though I do have wonderful people in my life it has not always been that way um, I, it took me I'm I hate to say my age but I'm gonna be 40 on my next birthday and I know I look great don't I <laughs> anyways um, And it took me almost 40 years to realize that a lot of the issues that I have or that were directed towards me had nothing to do with me. And so I ended up, okay, this one's a little long. So what I'm going to do is pull it back out. I'm going to take it and cut it off. See, just like in real life, like things happen. Uh, but, you know, it's really up to you with what you want to do in life and how you want to be. And you don't let anybody decide your worth, okay? I made that mistake for years. It was how people felt about me. Like that real, see, you heard the thing crumble a little bit but it's just the plastic that I glued the um I don't even know what this thing is called let's see floral foam okay now I know floral foam <laughs> um and what people you know you never know you don't know if they want to be good or you know you just you don't know okay so this is where we're at so far it's looking pretty good um yeah you can see where there's some holes and stuff but once you get it all glued in see like that i just flipped it out um you just keep filling it in i should have bought more baby's breath and yes i'm on the bigger side I'm proud of who I am now. I haven't always been, but I'm in a healthy relationship. I have a absolutely wonderful mother. Um, there were there were issues, you know, growing up and stuff. My parents weren't the greatest. However, I love them. So I ended up having to forgive a lot of stuff that happened. Even though really, like I like to say, like, it's not my place to forgive or judge, you know, but it kind of, I mean, when it affects you on the level, it affected me and my brother on, like, you can't do nothing, but just hope for the best. <laughs> and really, you have to either decide whether you're going to forgive them or you're going to let them do you dirty? I mean, really, it's about you. And don't, for whatever you do, just don't let them take your own self-worth away. Like, it's not worth it. It's really, really not. This is kind of turning into a different kind of video than I was expecting. But you know, like I said, this helps me feel better. And if it doesn't make you feel better, then that's okay. You don't you don't have to feel better, but it makes me feel better. 
Okay, so I said a second ago that there was this empty spot up front. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find one of the smaller ones, this one right here, and I'm gonna put it in there. Even though I still need to finish this, I think I have enough to finish with the baby's breath. I just wanna make sure that I get it to where the baby's breath actually goes around the perimeter. Um, because it would look weird if, you know, you only did it in the... I mean, you can only do it in the front if that if you're purposely doing that. That wasn't my purpose. So, for me, it would look weird considering that I'm trying to go all the way around it. Yeah, so... Um, crafting is something that I learned from my mom and her sister. My Aunt Jerry, rest her soul. She was this amazing person. She was kind of eccentric. She didn't think she would be able to have kids or nothing like that, but she ended up having one. That's a different story for a different time. It's really touching. She's really a wonderful person, or was a wonderful person. Um, she had breast cancer in 1997 and went through the old school chemo and radiation. And now, what we know now is that the types of chemo and radiation they had them on was not necessarily the best. So a lot of people who had the old school treatments, they have other health issues. Um, my aunt ended up having a brain tumor that was real, it, it was inoperable, but um, they put a port in her head and uh, kept draining the access fluid from around her brain. And she made it for about five years that way. Um, but in the end, her body just really just, it, it gave out. I mean, you know, it's okay. She fought for over 20 years after she was diagnosed with cancer. So she, she was just tired, you know? And... Even, even though I miss her, it's okay. It's okay. Because now all this stuff that I do do, I learn a lot of it. A lot of my crafting stuff from her. Um, she gave me my first little lesson on gardening. Of course, her, her flowers were real. <laughs> um, her and my mom, uh... So, my point is, you know, just, even if you don't, even if, I guess if, I guess if you don't, my point is, is that I learned crafting and it's so weird that she was the one to teach me because... Now I use it in order to handle a lot of stuff that goes on in my life. Like, um, you know, when you're stressed or, you know, you got a lot going on. I didn't put glue on that one. No, I didn't. But for a reason. Because I didn't know if that was going to be the right place or not. You can always go back and just put a dot of glue where it touches to hold it in place. Once it dries, it'll be in there. Um, yeah, but my aunt, she she really gave me my passion for crafting. We would sit around and, you know, like whatever you like, paint ceramic ornaments, which my mom really did more of than my aunt. But, I mean, my aunt was really the crafty one. She taught us all, including my mother. Um... She didn't always have a lot of money, so she would make things. And I mean, really, honestly, that is probably one of the best lessons that you can really learn. And not even if you have the money, this stuff relaxes me and makes me feel better. So while I'm relaxing and feeling better to make myself feel better, I'm also making something for somebody that hopefully they'll love. So...
obviously you can really see the circle it's starting to make. Um, kind of reminds me, for those of you who've seen the movie, The Hunger Games, you will know that it kind of looks like what Katniss did around Rue when Rue died. Um, that's not where the idol came from. It just happens to be what it reminds me of. And yeah, that reminds me of something sad, but it's okay because it was a sweet moment that showed the humanity even in the um, adverse atmosphere that she was in. Like, it gave her a heart. It showed that she was a very caring person. And we all loved Rue, didn't we? Okay, so we got all the baby's breath in. Right here needs some fluffing. So I'm gonna fluff that real quick. And some of it may be that the thing is didn't go very far in right there. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, it's not about being perfect, it's about being happy nothing in this world is perfect nothing god didn't create perfect things he created what we needed and this is not a religious channel so <laughs> let me just say that so there will be times that i do talk about god because i was brought up in the church and there will be times when I tell you what kind of that, that I not that I have problems with religion I don't I, everybody needs faith okay in something but organized religion is not my cup of tea it's just not um, real Christians will know what I'm talking about because they tell you to do this and that and the other, and that's just not, that's just not me. Um, I'm taught, I'm actually touching on a lot of subjects that I wasn't meaning to. So, um, I may have to go back and edit the video, even though I wasn't planning to, because I don't know how to edit the video, honestly. But, you know, I'm, you can learn anything. What is that? What is that? I have something on my finger. I have no idea what it is. It looks like blood. Maybe I stabbed myself. Um, but I don't see no gushing blood. I'm not squirting, so I'm okay. <laughs> um, now, with these, these are blue bonnets. Um, I'm going to do them just like I did the baby's breath. Cut them to the size I want. I'm actually... Oh, my Lord. I'm actually gonna uh, leave the greenery on these. Not because I love it or nothing like that, just because it makes it seem a little bit more like a regular, a regular um, blue bonnet. And um, story, my grandmother, who, had, who passed away in 2015. She was more like a mother than anything. I, um, we would spend uh, the Christmas holiday and um, the summer with her. And, you know, she was just this wonderful person. But she would grow these blue bonnets every year in her pasture. And even though she liked all her grass cut and everything to look on, um, in in place she would make sure that nobody would cut down her blue bonnets until the end of the season when they start drying out that way i, I don't know some, if some of y'all know but the blue a blue bonnet is the texas state flower and i'm in texas so um 
she would let them dry out and then she would, once they got dried and started dropping their seeds, she'd go ahead and mow them. And every year her little patch of blue bonnets got bigger and bigger. Um, I wished I could say they were still there, but they're not. My uh, grandpa, he just, he did, he just mows. He doesn't mow around certain things. And my grandma was a very hard, hard worker. She did most of the yard work and stuff when she was alive and all the cooking and cleaning. And my grandpa did all the financial work, you know, bringing home the money. And it was so funny in her, in their 50th wedding anniversary announcement um, in the newspaper, she said, you know, my her husband was retired from General Motors and she was not retired. <laughs> and that just the kind of person she was. She was this amazing person that I thank God for every day of my life. Because without her, my brother and I would have had it so much harder than we did growing up. Um, no, I'm not throwing no shade at my parents. That has nothing to do with them or with me. I'm just saying what my grandmother, her name was Cheryl, meant to me. Um, my other grandmother, Carolyn, my mom's mother, she was an amazing woman as well. I did not get to spend as much time with her as I would have liked over the years. But when we got older, when we got older, she, um, she was more uh, around but that was because she um she actually worked full time all my whole life most of my life um she retired in around um 2000 and it's somewhere in between 2003 and 2007 um and then shortly after that, she was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. Um, she made it five years with stage four lung cancer. Um, so I'm not here to tell you not to smoke or anything like that. If you smoke, just make sure that if there are small children around, you do not smoke around them it stunts their lung growth. And um, that's all I'm gonna say about that. So um, just keep that in mind, you know, because we love, love, love our children, don't we? Um, I don't have children. I have dogs. I have three dogs. Um, they are my children. <laughs> my, the only female dog I have, her name is Zoe. She is a puggle, meaning she is half pug, half beagle. She came to me in a time when I really needed her. I was having some mental health issues, um, as in my grandmother had just died, you know, maybe six months prior, um, Cheryl, and you know, I had a hard time dealing with it. Her and I were very close over the years. You know, you spend every summer with somebody for 18 years and then you turn over 18 and you start working and you get your own life. And then, you, you know, you do anything you can for them. Like she would call me and I would go and weed eat or mow or paint a building or paint a porch or stain her house or, you know, whatever she needs. She lived in a a cedar house so by staining I mean stain like you would take stain like what's on this table and put it on the outside of the house and when we were doing that it was stain and it had to be had to been done all the time like all the time like probably I would say every two or three years it had to be done in order to keep the color of the house right because my grandma didn't just let it go then we found this wonderful color. I don't even know um, what the brand was or anything like that, but it was a semi-translucent. It gave the wood grain and the color, but it wasn't 
completely see-through so a lot of the imperfections would be hidden and not only that but her and I right before she passed spent um, two days painting her front porch with it and still to this day where it's 2023 she passed away in September of 2015 um, her front porch still does not need to be repainted. So, wouldn't you know, <laughs> it was this wonderful, wonderful, um, product. And had we known about it 20 years sooner, it would have saved her and I a lot of work. <laughs> um, when I go out to her house now, like... She loved flowers and she worked in her yard and stuff all the time. And I wouldn't say she was a gardener though. She didn't really garden. She tried to a couple of times and it was okay. Like it wasn't that bad, um, but it was just a lot of work. And she really liked the pow and the bang of the colored flowers. Her favorite color was like an orange red. Um, she painted her front door red. Um, you know, she's just an old Texas girl. And she wore big hair all the way until she turned 15. And then she cut her hair off and permed it. And a lot of you know, here in Texas, when you when a woman hits a certain point in their life, the hair is gone. It's gone. Like, you, it's hot. It's not fun. They don't want to play with it all the time no more. They don't want to even deal with it. So, that was my grandma. <laughs> she permed it, cut it short, and when it was time to go somewhere, she squirted it with water and picked it and was ready to go. So, she was really this amazing person. Like, I just wish y'all could have known her. Um, anyways, my other dog is a six-year-old Chewini, half, ch half Chihuahua, half Weenie dog. Um, his name is Bandit. He, I got him, uh, three months after I got Zoe because I know I didn't have inside dogs. I just, that just wasn't my thing for the longest time. And it still really isn't my thing, but I do not regret my babies. I do, do not regret my babies. So that being said, I probably won't have any more inside dogs after this. I mean, of course, I'm not cruel. I will bring my dogs in if the weather's bad and stuff like that. Um, but the amount of hair from the Puggle is outrageous. Like, I mean, you could almost make clothes out of the amount of hair she sheds. It's almost like a sheep. Um, and then we have a senior dog. He's been in the family now um, almost 18 years. He's going to be 18 on October 5th. Um, his name is Deuce Lee. We all call him Bubba. He is this wonderfully senior butt. <laughs> uh, he is just... When I came into the picture, he was actually my father-in-law's dog. Um... My father-in-law, he's still alive. He's just in the nursing home. He has psychosis, so that's another story. But the dog um, was, he, I wouldn't say he was aggressive. He just, he was set in his ways already. So when my father-in-law went into the nursing home, my husband and I um, kept the dog because my father-in-law had moved in with us three years prior to going into the nursing home because his wife had passed and he was um, no longer, um, you know, capable of really living alone. Um, and, you know, that happens. It happens. Um, it ended up being a lot to handle. So um, he, we ended up talking to his doctors one time because he kept falling down. And, you know, I got a patient care advocate from the hospital and, um, you know, I told her what was going on, you know, I told her my father-in-law kept falling and this and that. And every time the paramedics would come, 
they just really were kind of shitty about. Oh, I'm going to have to edit that. Anyways, any times the paramedics would come, they would be questioning, like, what did y'all do to him? Did y'all put him in the floor? And I'm like, no, sir. If, you know, like, why would we, first of all, why would we do that? Second of all, like, if we were putting him in the floor, why would we call 911 to get him up? Like, that's kind of my whole thing. So, we ended up getting a patient care advocate involved. And, um, you know, we wanted a decision on whether it was best for him to be at home with us or, if, you know, if he needed full around-the-clock care. And it was decided by the doctor and the patient care advocate that it was probably in his best interest to go ahead and go to um, a facility. Um, it started off as rehab. He does not want to be there. He does not like it, um, which I understand. But he does have psychosis, so there are times when he doesn't know where he's at at all. Um, and, you know, it's hard on my husband. It's hard on me, too, but it's harder on my husband. He, um, he loves his dad. And, you know, him and his dad have basically lived together since right before... My husband's mother died in 93, um, except for, you know, a five-year period after him and I met. And to be honest, um, his, his dad and his stepmom really did not care for me, um, which is fine. I still took care of his dad for three years when he moved down here because my husband does work all the time. And, you know, I work, I do um, housework, I cook, I clean, I do yard work, I take care of the dogs, I take care of the cars. You know, it's a full-time job just keeping the house running. And um, hopefully my videos will take off because I really love crafting. I really, really love crafting. And if I can make videos and maybe get, um, you know, going on that. Maybe I can, you know, where this is going, make some money. Um, not that that is the most important thing. The most important thing is just to relax and to do something that makes me feel good. Um, my husband agrees with me, you know, it's, it's really not about money anymore. Um, not that we're rich. We're definitely not rich. Um, but our bills are paid, you know, so that's good. Um, but you know, this, it's just life. It's just how life goes. And, okay. So now you can see, you see it's all, it's really starting to come together. It's very beautiful. Um, we got a couple of spots like this right here. I'm going to have to, um, maybe figure out why the, Baby's breath got pushed over. Uh, my music stopped. <laughs> we it went through the whole CD. So that's kind of, you know, I wasn't expecting to go that long. But, I mean, you know, it takes a while to make something. And since I am just recording the whole thing and talking to y'all, um, <laughs> the... The CD played. I mean, that's just what happened. Now, for the end, I'm going to cut this off, and I'm going to put the red ones in the center, okay? Just to give it a little pop of color. Um, if you don't want to do the red, you can definitely fill in the center with more blue bonnets. Or, and, I mean, really, honestly, if I would have known, I probably would have got some more baby's breath. But... It looks fine. It looks good. I like it from this side best because this side, the baby's breath is kind of weird. <laughs> so let's cut these red roses and finish it up. Or red roses. These are, um, actually these are red baby's breath. I did not know that, but that's what the tag says. Oh, again, Dollar Tree. 
Um, I do buy some of my flowers and stuff from Hobby Lobby. Um, but the trick with Hobby Lobby really is you need to wait until they have a sale. Like that's just straight up, that's what it is. That's the tea. You need to make sure that um, you're not overspending on your flowers because especially if you're doing artificial flowers, like really like, I mean, look at this. These are Dollar Tree flowers. If you sit and arrange them and get it going, they look fine, they look good. Like I'm, I would not be embarrassed to have this in my house. Like I would not, like it's cute. Um, but it's not always plausible to buy your flowers at Hobby Lobby because they're not cheap, they're not. So when Hobby Lobby doesn't have a sale going, I like to go to Dollar Tree, maybe even Dollar General or Family Dollar because sometimes they have, um, during spring and stuff, they sometimes have um, flowers, you know. Some, sometimes uh, they're the uh, floral um, arrangements for the cemetery but that's okay too. I mean, whether you use it for the cemetery or not, it doesn't matter. It really just what you like, what you can deal with, um, what looks good. And if you're new to crafting, do not get down on yourself if your first thing doesn't come out okay. I mean, they're not all going to. Okay, they're just not. Um... There have been plenty of things that I have made, and when I was done, I'm like, what is that? <laughs> so, just keep that in mind. Really, just keep it in mind. Um, I could actually put these in to fill out some of the baby breast parts, but really, I bought them to put in the center because I love a pop of red. So, I'm going to put a dab of glue. And if you're wondering how much, how many glue sticks I go through, just for the record, this one has only taken about one full glue, glue stick because you don't want to overdo it. You're using the um, floral craft, floral foam, um, which will hold stuff in place already. And with a little dot of glue, it really is going to hold it. Um, as you can see, I'm putting the red flowers in. And if you fast forward through the video and you just pulled this part up just to see the end product, that's perfectly all right. Like, I get it. I do that sometimes, too. People get to talking, and, you know, sometimes it's irrelevant. Sometimes it's just, you know, I mean, honestly, sometimes it's loneliness. Um, it's okay. Like, all that is okay. If you're lonely, that is nothing to be sad about. If, I mean, obviously, you can be, it is something to be sad about, but not because you're lonely. I mean, it just is what it is. There's not always going to be somebody there to, you know, hold your hand or talk to you or whatever you need at the moment. There are going to be moments in life where you're not going to get anywhere close to what you need. I mean, but the trick to that is knowing what's coming and not psychically I mean not everybody's psychic um what I mean is like you can pretty well know if you're not feeling right and so just your reaction that's what you've got to learn and that's what I had to learn like it's not about how you feel or anything it's about the reaction that people see so even if you're lonely um I mean that's okay I would not go out in public and cry to everybody about it. I mean, there's there's no sense in that. 
people just don't care anymore. You know, I mean, I hate to say that. And if you ever meet me, I do care. I'm special like that. And I'm sure there are other people out there. It's just we have a society that is more focused on themselves instead of the well-being of everybody as a whole, not just themselves. Um, but, you know, people learn what they're taught. I mean, some people didn't have the chance. I mean, their parents didn't give them a chance. They didn't have a grandmother that, you know, loved them regardless. They didn't have people that would help them, you know. And so, you know, people just... They suck sometimes, but it is up to you to uh, do what you would like to do. Um, this is my flower arrangement. Um, I'm probably going to tweak it slightly. I need to put a couple of red ones right in here, um, but that's what I'm going to do. And it has been so great talking to all of y'all. And, um, you know, here's to more videos and getting to know each other.